Compute Service, EC2. There are four core components that you're going to be dealing with when working in EC2. The first one is the Amazon Machine Image, or the AMI, that your instance is going to be based on. Then comes the type of instance that you want to set up. Then comes the storage that you want to give to your instance. And then lastly, the way you want to handle the accessibility of this instance via security groups. We're going to take a look at all of these. The way in which AMIs work is really simple. Basically, it's a ready-to-go machine that is pre-configured with a bunch of settings so that you don't have to go through the hassle of installing a bunch of applications and wasting precious time on getting your instance ready to actually begin working. It's as simple as selecting which AMI you want to use, then launching your instance. The same AMI can be used to create countless EC2 instances. On Amazon, you're going to see three different AMI options available to you. The first one is going to be the one most readily available to you, and that would be the community AMIs. These AMIs are free to use, and you just have to select which operating system you want to use. On the AWS console, the AMIs that can be used for free will have the green free tier eligible option under the icon. The second type of AMIs are the paid ones that come with extra software is pre-installed. These cost a premium because they come with a bunch of value adds. Lastly, you can create your own AMI as a personal option. This is for the users that have a complete idea of what they want to do and how it is they want to do it, so they use their own operating systems and such to do so. When it comes to the type of instance that you can have in your EC2, we have a bunch of options available within Amazon AWS. You can have a general purpose instance or you can have it to be compute optimized, graphics optimized, memory optimized, and even storage optimized. What this tells us is that the instance type is basically just the hardware that we are given to run our instance. And it's the hardware that is allocated by AWS to our instance. There's a bunch of families that you will find when it comes to instance types on AWS. These are the families that you're going to be seeing when you go to set up or select an instance type. So you'll have T2, which is tiny or turbo, M5, which is main or medium, C5 for compute, P3 for pictures, R4 for RAM, X20 for extreme, H1 for hard drives, I3 for IOPS, and D2 for dense. When it comes to the security groups on your EC2, all security groups do is manage how the traffic comes and goes from your EC2 instance. So security groups operate on the instance level and they manage your EC2 via a bunch of rules. These rules are your inbound rules and your outbound rules. And these rules dictate what kind of traffic can communicate to your EC2. There are a bunch of ways that AWS will charge you if you're using EC2, unless of course you're using the free tier. So let's talk about that one first. So the AWS free tier includes 750 hours of Linux and Windows T2 Micro for each month for a year. So you can go ahead and use this if you like, and if it suits your workload, this is also a great place to learn about EC2, and it's good to teach in also. So the second one we come on to is on-demand. So on-demand instances, you pay for the compute capacity by the hour or the second, depending on which instances you run. So there's no long-term commitment here. There's no upfront payments that are required and you can increase and decrease your compute capacity depending on the demands of your application and only pay the specified per hourly rate for the instance you use. So this is great for application testing and development, especially if we're working in EC2 for the first time. And it's also great for applications that have short-term spiky or unpredictable workloads that cannot be interrupted. Moving on, we have the savings plans available on AWS. So savings plans are a flexible pricing model that offer low prices on EC2 and Fargate usage in exchange for a commitment to a consistent amount of usage, which is measured in dollars per hour for a one or three year term. There is an upfront payment included or involved when it comes to savings plans, 
and they're pretty simple to work with and pretty cheap. The only catch is that you have to stay committed for the term that you have signed on. Moving on, we have these reserve plans available in AWS. So reserve plans provide a discounted hourly rate and an optional capacity reservation for EC2 instances. AWS billing automatically applies to your reserve instances discounted rates when attributes of EC2 instance usage match the attributes of an active reserve instance. In the same way as savings plans, these reserve instances do require a one to three year commitment. They have a low to moderate flexibility and they also require an upfront payment. They're cheap like savings plans, but these instances can be a little tricky to work with. Lastly, we have spot instances in AWS. So spot instances allow you to request spare Amazon EC2 computing capacity for up to 90% off the on-demand price. So these are basically, hey, you have some resources that you're not using, I could go for them. So can I have them please? That's basically how spot instances work. However, there's a lot of catches when it comes to using spot instances. These instances are not flexible. These, flex these instances may be terminated at any given time with very short prior notice. It is extremely difficult to work with these instances. And though it is the cheapest of all options, it has no commitment. It's still pretty tricky to go with. It's only recommended for users with urgent computing needs for large amounts of additional capacity or for applications that have flexible start and end times, or applications that are only feasible at very low compute prices.